Um, the stream is starting officially in about um, 48 seconds, so I will go ahead and pretend that somebody watches the stream and uh, give us the 48 seconds. Uh, give us, give them the 48 seconds, rather, to so I can satisfy my belief that uh, someone cares. It's pretty sad. No one does, but uh, I've got to fill another 30 seconds with powder uh, and chat. It is. Um, it is. You know. It just is. Sometimes, that's all you got to say. So um, let's hang on another 15 seconds here. That was, of course, not Paul Simon with the sounds of silence. That was just the sounds of some silence. So that that was that's pretty good. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, normally, I use the stream as a method of programming while talking. But uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, I want to look at some of the uh, functions I've already written in BCLib staging. Uh, these are functions that I've, I've written before, uh, but they are interesting and they can be useful uh, in OpenStreetMap. So um, unlike the other streams, this stream is not really going to be helpful to me, at least not at the beginning, and, and unless we advance past what I've already done. Uh, and since no one watches it, um, it's not going to be helpful to anyone else either. So I think I've uh, sort of transcended my original goal of creating a stream that's only useful to me uh, by now creating a stream that's useful to absolutely no one, not even me. So let's go ahead and get started. Now earlier I showed you how you could use um, a Pro program I'd written, a URL's right here of course, um, to look at what tiles make up uh, a given map. So when OpenStreetMap, I think we get it all the way down to um, no. So the the um, sort of the biggest tile that OpenStreetMap has is the zero 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 tile, which includes the whole world, uh, minus one eighty to plus one eighty longitude. Um, because it's a Mercator map, it doesn't include plus or minus ninety degrees. It goes as far as about eighty five point oh five, and as far south as minus eighty five point oh five. And this has a height of the you know pretty much the whole world, but south pole to north, well, almost south pole to almost north pole. Um, and there's a lot of other, uh, you know, the width is uh, 85 degrees, the width is 2,145 miles. So not a huge thing there. It, it can be more interesting if you zoom in, um, and, you know, this is obviously going to go a little bit, it's gonna, I'm going a little bit too fast for it to keep up. But it's, it's, it's more interesting if you zoom in, and so you can get sort of an idea. This block right here, for example, goes from minu minus 106 uh, to minus 104 in longitude and from... 34 to 36.5 degrees in, in latitude. Uh, so the, 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 the one sort of thing wrong here is, of course, we're relying on a third, uh, we're relying on a Perl script that's running somewhere else to do this. So the question is, can we do this in client-side JavaScript ourselves? Can we create, like, these fake tiles? Uh, and hello, thank you for the one person who's actually watching. Uh, shout out. Um, can we actually create the, the sort of overlay in, in JavaScript itself? And the answer is yes, we can. And in fact, I've already done this, so we're going to go, uh, hopefully we're going to be able to find it. I call it fake, well, let me actually look for it. I know what I call it. I call it fake slippy tile. And a fake slippy tile, well, what is it? It's basically going to have this information printed on the tile itself. Uh, the Z, X, and Y values, Z is the zoom level, X is the where in the longitude you are, Y is where in the latitude you are. And then, of course, you know, the uh, slippy tile, that's not, the Z, X, and Y values aren't really helpful because when we measure the Earth, we use latitude and longitude those values will also be shown. And um, we're going to literally print the string EOF right now, just so you know where uh, the, d this was actually originally done so I could get the size of the uh, of the text correct. If it's too big, it'll, it won't show all the text. If it's too small, it's hard to see. So that's why I put the EOF in there. We could add other stuff in here, and in fact, we might. So we're going to look at this um, function, and we're going to be depth first. We're actually going to look at it and then if we see another function, we're going to call it, and we're going to understand it, and then come back. Sort of the way the program would run it. Okay? So the first thing we do is we create a canvas. This is not a leaflet canvas. This is a regular, everyday HTML canvas. It is not the map that we're displaying on. It's a totally separate canvas. It's a canvas that never gets displayed, and that's sort of a, um, an interesting point in that you can create canvases in HTML that are never displayed. You don't have to pretend to show it. You don't have to hide it. It's just a it's just a sort of an object that exists. Uh, because slippy tiles are 256 by 256, we go ahead and make it uh, that big. And then uh, the con you know, get context just means we, we now need a way to draw on it. Uh, so we create a fill style. This is um, 
Uh, let's see what this is. This is bluish, I think. This is a, yeah, I think this is a light blue. And um, I'll well, actually have to find out. I think I'm, I think I'm trying to replicate this, this sort of light blue shading here, which might not be a great idea because there's, you know, that one I just sort of made up anyway. Um, and we're going to fill the whole rectangle. So this just gives us a background of light blue. We're using a font size of 20, which I somehow determined was correct. A little bit of cleverness here to say the font we're going to use is 20px Arial. This means we can change the font size without having to change, you know, the whole font. We we can just change the font size and it'll always be that number of pixels Arial. And the fill style is um, black. Sorry, it's red. Really? Okay. Um, red. And I don't know what that is. Um, stroke style is going to be uh, yellow. Boy, that's going to look really bad. And FF is, of course, red. 255 red, 0 green, 0 blue. This is uh, 255 red and green, which is yellow. Um, okay, and then I guess I'm going to okay, I guess I'm going to surround the tile. Sorry, with uh, and I haven't I haven't looked at this in a while, which is why I'm kind of stumbling over this code. I'm pretty sure it does work. I mean, it did at one point. Um, and so that stroke rect is not a full rectangle. It's like sort of just the outline of a rectangle. And so we're going to draw that apparently in this uh, weird red and yellow for some reason. Uh, now we go to a fill style of white, uh, which will show up pretty nicely on light blue, actually. So, um, okay. And over here, by the way, if we go back to print array, th this is actually not a single string. It's uh, an array of strings, each of which I'm going to print on a new line. Um, Presumably, I could have just made this one string, but I think there's a reason I did it this way. So basically, what we do now is we, on the on the canvas that we've created, we uh, print out these lines at the given font size. Um, sorry, we print out these lines, the font size I said earlier. The font size times i plus 1 here is the position where we place it. Uh, because the font size is 20, we have to leave uh, 20 pixels uh, horizontally, so, I mean vertically rather, vertically between the lines, otherwise the lines will overlap. I'm actually somewhat surprised that um, that 20 is enough here. And let me see what the 5 there means, because I have no idea. Hopefully this will tell me. If it doesn't, we'll have to just live with it being okay. Oh, right, right, sorry. So this is, uh, we're going to put the text, so this is what we're putting, lines 1 through 5, these lines here. Uh, five is the X position, so we're going to not go quite to the left border because it turns out that that's ugly. Um, I'm sorry, uh, you can't see the bottom of the screen. Can I scroll down further? Um, yes. Okay, hold on one second here. The problem is that I actually this is kind. Let me see if I can fix this. Um, do one second here. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Um, I will try to work 57 to 84. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah. So I see what you're saying. So you can see this stuff. I will try to keep it so the stuff I'm working on is is in the upper part of the screen. I, I, there is there's actually a reason that the lower part of the screen is invisible to you, and that is because if it wasn't, it would make the screen too small, I think. Let me try something actually, since uh, we, we actually have someone here. I'm going to try making this a little bit smaller. Uh, okay, so now the screen should be fitting completely. Um, okay, did, did, did that help? Uh, can you now see the whole screen, and is the text still large enough um, that you can see what, I, what, I'm, what I'm doing? Okay, fantastic. No, 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 please. Um, it'd be really useful. Let me know if the text is too small now. I think I, I tried it once like this, and the problem is that the text got to be too small. Uh, if it is, I can enlarge the text, not a problem. I just wanted to sort of keep a balance to the extent possible. Okay, um, thank you again very much for that. That was very helpful. So we're going to print 5 in the uh, x direction. That means it's not going to be quite left flush. It's going to be 5 pixels over, and each line will be 20 pixels because that's font size further down. Okay, so now what's the what's the sort of okay? Thank you. Um, can you see the whole screen now? I mean, let me know because I can. If I, you know, I, I I really would like to fix this once and for all. And if you've if you've you can tell me there's something wrong with it. You want the font to be bigger. You want the um, 
anything, really, um, this would be a really good time to get it right for future broadcasts. Um, but go ahead and tell me if you want to. If, you, if this is great, that's good, too. Um, so the big thing here is what we actually return is a PNG image, a ping image. And, okay, thank you. Let me take a look at that real quick. Um, okay, that actually looks pretty good to me. That looks fine. Thank you, by the way, for, um, for I don't even know which Discord I'm in. Ha <laughs> ha. But th whatever Discord you did that from, let me check. I think it's in the, um, it's in the, uh, oh, sent me a direct message. Thank you. That was awesome. Okay, cool. So I think this looks okay. Um, so the trick what we're going to do here is we're going to return a URL, and the URL is a the base 64 representation of a PNG image, and we will look at that some more. It's basically a very long string of characters uh, that represents a PNG, a ping image, a uh, portable network graphics image. What, what's sort of unusual is normally images are embedded and you look at them from the outside, but it is possible to, uh, to use a URL that is completely local and still is an image. So you can image source something that is actually local. It's a, it's a bit of a cheat, but it's actually really great because it means um, you can ship web pages around without having to put the images separately. The images can be directly in line. So now the question, of course, is how does this work? How do we actually use this? Um, it's a darn good question because I forgot how. Create. There's a way to do this that actually I think uses a... Um, um, Oh, good. I have no idea. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's go back over here. Oh, yeah, we're using just index.html directly. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to check how we do this, but there is a... Um, it's not that... We basically end up adding a tile layer uh, that has these sort of weird URLs uh, that gets these weird URLs from the... Uh, in fact, you know, we have two tile layers here. And we basically just add a third tile there that is going to be uh, the, uh, the the return value of this. Wow, did I just... I was pretty sure it was just... Three. Okay, that's going to use the return value of this. Now the question is, how do I do that? I forgot, but I'm going to go check on some of the other stuff I have here. And this will just take a few seconds. Or maybe not, it might take forever. Um... And let's see. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I found the code where I do this, but... Um, This might not be the way I want to do this, because the thing code I'm looking at right now actually creates uh, slippy tiles for everything, for every single tile. And at level 13, that's way too many tiles. Uh, what I'm looking at is the way I created the sort of uh, fake slippy tiles for a spherical uh, view of, at zoom level 4, which is very doable. It's Zoom level 4 still has like 256 tiles, but you can get away with that. You can't get away with that at zoom level 13. That's just not going to work. So hopefully I will be able to find out how I did this um, in a more generic way. Wouldn't count on it, though. All right, let's see. Unfortunately, my stuff is everywhere, so I have to look through multiple things to find anything. Oops. Okay. Okay. And if this doesn't work, I, I do have a way of, of doing this. I think there might even be a function uh, in wow, uh, in bclib or bclib staging that um, that can build a fake slippy tile map from individual slippy tiles. And if there's not, there's other functions that can do something similar. Uh, let, me give, let me give this a little, one more try here. And then if this fails, we will, you can't see what I'm doing, so it's not really helpful to you at all. Um, so let's see. Oh, sorry, we're in tile layer. Let's go back over here. And let's see. Create flakes at tile and return the data URL presentation of it. 
Um, and so I need to call this function from something. And let me see if I have something in here that does that. Nope, I do not. However, I know I have a function in here that does it for other types of maps. And bound number, no, 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 not this. Um, this function is important. We're going to look at it in just a second, but not right now. Um, uh, yeah, this is the this is the kind of function I'm looking for. Place tiles on map. So what this does, and we're probably going to just copy this into. Um, did I create a special? I did not create a special library for this. I might actually do that though. Um, so this is uh, this is really what we're going to be doing here. What we what we're going to do here is I'll explain this line in a sec. Basically, what we're going to do is uh, the big big thing here is get bounds. This tells us what part of the map is showing, and this is actually uh, really useful. And I'm going to see if we can do it. Just get the bounds of the map without doing anything else first, and from the bounds we can determine which slippy tiles are showing. So let me see if I can actually do that. Let's see, add buttons, add controller. When a button is hit, do this, do that. Um, update view rect get bounds. And okay, this is actually a little, um, let me actually run this and so we will sort of remember what, what was happening. Um, previously, what we've done is we created um, the square that we could move around north, south, east, west. And the dots in there are actually, we're looking at some overpass data, which are, we're not going to look at today. So, so this is what we did earlier. So this is the rect in this, uh, in this code here. Uh, but we're not going to be looking at that. Uh, what we are going to be looking at here is, I want a console log. I'm going to be a little bit careful here. And I might have to add some controllers, which I don't really want to do. OK, now it's dots. And that's overpass stuff. OK. Um, and we're going to just console log this. So. And which is not great, but you know it's 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 a good debugging thing. So let's see. So I guess when we run update view, this is actually not going to work the way we want. But uh, let's do it anyway. Um, so let's see. I think I'm just calling my map map get bounds. This probably will not do what I want, unfortunately. Run this, and look at the console. Nothing happening yet. Now the problem is, I run update view only when I hit one of those buttons. So as long as I don't hit a button, nothing happens. If I hit a button, we should have something show up, and this is what shows up in the console. So what this tells us is the map we're looking at here. If we were to look at it full screen, which we sort of can't because we're kind of in a little compressed area here, uh, it would tell us that the uh, Southwest, northeast, southwest, northeast. Whoa. Um, southwest. Oh, right, because I must have hit the button twice. I think. Let's see. Well, I'm gonna. Okay, hang on. I'm not gonna guess. Try this one more time. It once. Hmm. Okay, I don't know why this is being printed out twice with different numbers. Hmm. Oh, I know why. Because I'm logging both the uh, map bounds. Yes, it is. Thank you, Forgotten Hero. You're one step ahead of me. Wow. I can't believe someone's actually paying attention. You're correct. The rect get bounds, I was printing out the four corners of the square as opposed to the four corners of the map. So I'm commenting that line out now. I'm going to run it again and again. This is something I'm going to have to fix because now I am changing the view. I'm changing the bounds, but it's not recognizing that because it's not... Up, it's not the Leaflet's doing a lot of this stuff by magic, so I, my program doesn't get to see it yet. But now if we go west, boom. And there it is. Those are the four corners of the map. So, um, oh, you're so kind. You're better than I am. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. 
so now I actually do know how to, I think. Uh, Leaflet does so much of the handling of this for you, but we can add our own listeners in addition to what Leaflet does. Um, and I say that with great confidence, as though I actually, um, actually can do that. Let's see. All right. Let's see. And I'm again looking at code you can't see, which hopefully does what I want. Probably doesn't, though. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. I, and I think what I'm looking for is the on zoom. Wow. Uh, the on zoom handler and the on move handler. But I'm not sure that those are the names of them. So I should really prepare for this. But then it wouldn't be any fun. Um, okay, let's see. On zoom. There is a way to do this. Um, yeah, there is a way to catch it when it's mo when um, when you're scrolling the screen. Wow. Okay. Let's try it from here. Okay, um, um, I, I've done this before, which doesn't help us at all right now. You basically need to add two listeners to the map. Um, and let me try a Google search here. So, not on a marker. on zoom is what we really want and there's a space there but I think we'll figure that out for us um, on the zoom the zoom is x1 and map on yeah that's this is the kind of code we're gonna need this is what how we're gonna have to define it I'm gonna try to find what I did before Much a hopeless task here. I'm pretty sure I've done this before. And again, you, I know you can't see what I'm doing here, so uh, don't worry about it. But um, trying to do some code reuse here. And I think I will actually be able to do that. Aha! Okay, not looking good. Hmm. Okay, not good, not good. Wow. <sighs> the only other place I might have it is in my re uh, one of my other replets, which I'm not really sure I want to dig into because it's ugly. Although it is nice to reuse code, I don't really have this. Isn't very organized. This, this, it's not private, but it's just not very well organized. Um, so let's look here real quick. Uh, I don't know if there's a way to search through everything at once. The phrase we're looking for is zoom end, and if I can get it just exactly the way. And I want to look at it and f like through everything. It, this might be where it is actually. There we are. So these lines from another replet, zoom end and move end. These are the functions it'll call when, well, you know, uh, the map has finished zooming or finished moving. So just copy these and put them into our somewhere. 
Oh, I keep forgetting that this overwrites what I've done, so I've got to go back here. Okay. And it's going to take a little time here. I need to fix, I need to tweak this browser settings, but... Okay, so let's see. Um, we need to do it after we create the map, obviously. Um, let's see, we'll create the map here. Map, add to map. Uh, script. Okay, come on, let URL equal it. There we are. So, this is where we create the map. This is where we set the view of the map to be at zero, zero with the zoom level four. And here uh, is where we can say that if the map gets zoomed, when it's finished zooming, and I think we're just going to stick with update view as our function. We're just going to make that the sort of every does everything function whenever anything happens, uh, update view is called. So we can do, um, and we don't put parentheses, this is just the name of the function. And hopefully I spelled that right. Let's make sure I didn't do something. Yay, all right. So if this works, let's 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 see if this works. Just run it. Okay, the console rect is undefined. Hmm. Am I doing something in update view that's ugly? Oh. <laughs> yeah, the problem here is I've, I've, when I do a set view, this actually does zoom the map. Uh, and because JavaScript is asynchronous, it immediately tries to call update view even before rect is defined. So we're going to be a little bit nicer about this. And we're going to try to put this after rect is defined so we don't totally screw things up. Um, there we go. So here's where we add rect. So now if we do this, uh, I think there's enough synchronicity that this will not break things. In other words, uh, it'll be able to call update view with the rect defined. I could be wrong. Okay, nothing's going on, that's fine. So now we're just going to move, oh, whoa, whoa, something already happened. Okay, let's just hit return a couple of times. Okay, um, so now I'm going to just, uh, you know, move it over here. And wow, so the console is very, very active here. It just tells me this is where I've ended up. And if I zoom out enough, uh, we should be able to see lots. Of, every time I zoom out, it's going to do this. And now we can see that I am. Um, okay, that does not look correct. Let's uh, here. Here we go. I. It's a little suspicious that this came in right here, but this looks more realistic. The latitude now goes from 33 degrees to 39 degrees. Um, am I console logging two things again? I thought I'd gotten rid of the other console log. Uh, nope, I'm still an idiot. This is because I was console logging it before and after I moved the, the, the rectangle. All right, so 93rd time's a charm. Let's just run it again. Okay. And right now, I haven't done anything, so it's, it's going to be fine the way it is. So now I'm going to zoom out, and now it's going to tell me uh, latitude goes from 34 to 35, longitude minus 106 to minus 106.32. So let's zoom out, like, really, really far and make sure it's working by, like, getting a view of... Oh, let's go crazy and go to the Western United States. Okay, so the very last one of these should be fairly wide. Uh, latitude 11 to 53, longitude minus 141 to minus 71. So that is actually looking that is actually looking pretty good. Okay, so that's how we know what part of the map is showing. Uh, there is a function I think called get zoom, which will also tell us how far zoomed in we are. Um, but that this that one's okay because I've actually written a function. Uh, the function we're looking at here in bclib.js. I wish it would keep. Oh, I reloaded by mistake. Otherwise, it would have kept position. Um, tile let's see. Da, 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 da. Place tile. Let's see. Okay. Um, so this line we won't worry about for right now. 
Um, yeah. And by the way, it's get zoom in the map that tells us what our zoom level is. Um, so let's see. And the bound number here is just uh, because for when I did this, I didn't want I didn't want to print stuff at every zoom level because if you have like a million objects around the world, you don't necessarily want to print them at every level because at level zero, that's going to look really ugly. You only want to print them after a certain amount of of zoomage. Uh, but again, that's uh, that's not something we're going to need right now. Get the map bounds. Um, limit. Um, the the more the more interesting part, the thing that we actually need to look at here is. Um, we need to get the north, south, east, and west bounds of the map. We could use now. Remember in console we have this sort of underscore southwest lat long uh, underscore northeast. So could we use these uh, field values, these properties? instead of using functions, and the answer is you probably could, but the correct way to do it here is to use the existing, the functions they give us, which are get north, get south, get east, get west, and they, those get the, uh, the four corners, the four sides, rather, of the bounding rectangle. Okay, and again, we're not going to use this function, this is just going to be our sort of our guideline. Um, wow, and I really wrote some tight code here, which is great, but it's also really confusing. Um, okay, so why don't we go ahead and write rewrite this function? Um, place tiles on map template for tile URL. Could probably even just modify this. Um, okay, so I am now going to create a new file called um, BC Twitch Maps. Maybe I don't know. It's probably a good name. Um, well, you know what? Yeah, I, I, I don't necessarily want to clutter up uh, this library. On the other hand, at some point, they are all going to be loaded anyway. So it's not that big of a deal. So we're going to add a file called BC... We'll just call it BC Maps. Okay. Alrighty, and just because I know I'm going to forget if I don't do it this way. We will load it. We will load it uh, after leaflet, but before we do anything else. Okay, and and where was I? So right now I'm just going to copy it and we'll go through it line by line and fix what we need to fix or understand why it's there. So let's just copy the whole place tiles on map. It's not going to look the same um, because I'm going to try to write it in a more understandable but longer way. Uh, let's see. So control C, Control V. We're going to have to change the name of the function too, obviously, otherwise it's going to go uh, it's going to go crazy and uh, try to. Uh, it's going to have two functions defined at the same time. Okay, so like with all my functions, you will pass it an object. Um, place fake slippy tiles on leaflet canvas. Leaflet. We're just going to call it a, it's canvas map, really the same thing. And the values we're going to pass to this, given the following values in a hash. So the values we're going to pass to this function in a hash, I mean, Let's go ahead and be really proper and say in an object, because that's what JavaScript likes us to call them. Okay, map. This is just basically the map where we're going to put the tiles. So it's in, in our index.html, we're just calling this map. Not very creative, but that, that's what we're going to be putting it. Um, tile URLs, that we are not going to have that, because we are not going to be doing that. Min zoom, max zoom. Um, because for fake slippy tiles, we really want to print across the board. There is no min zoom or max zoom. Um, projection, okay, now this is something I was experimenting with that actually is not relevant to what we're doing here, and is actually sort of confusing. One second. And <clears throat> what I was trying to do here now, OpenStreetMaps and, and uh, Google Maps API, not their website, but their API, uses Mercator projected maps. Um, they have some advantages, they have some disadvantages. 
Um, I was trying an experiment where I reprojected the tiles from Mercator to Equi Rectangular. Uh, it turns out that 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 has other problems. Different problems solve some, creates new ones. So I think for and I think what I eventually decided on was I'm just going to create everything with Mercator. I'm going to sort of follow the guideline that OpenStreetMaps and Google have pro provided at least for right now, which is we use Mercator projection. Uh, and I w I'm going to forget about equi rectangular for right now. Okay, and now the other real, really interesting one that I'm going to keep um, is opacity. Uh, now, if you go back to this map here, you'll notice it's kind of, you can sort of see the overlay and you can sort of see the cities and stuff underneath, but it would be really nice if you could control, uh, you know, if you could make this the, the overlay fainter or the background fainter. And either, in either case, we can't have them both be fully opaque because then one would go on top of the other and you wouldn't see one. Um, so we are going to keep opacity, the, excuse me, the opaqueness. And fake, if set to one, don't do anything, just print out bugging information. Okay, uh, this line we will not need min zoom, max zoom projection because we're going to assume, okay. Now what this line does is a little bit crazy. Um, and and it's crazy because I don't require that people send me an opacity. So the problem is if no one se if someone doesn't send me an opacity, how do I set? And I set it to one if no one sets it. Um, and I should probably put that in here. Default equals one. So how do I do that? I do that through this magic. So I take whatever they send me, the object. I take opacity equals one and convert it from a string, which is opacity equals one to an object that has opacity colon one, has one field right now, it can have more uh, capacity that, and then I merge hashes, it's the function I wrote, and it really could be called merge objects. So basically it takes all the values in object, and then if opacity is not defined in the object, it gets set to one by this, by, by converting the second part to an object. So it merges two objects, uh, but if a value exists in both of the ob in both the first and second object, the first object takes precedence. So whatever the user says is the default, but if the user leaves out a value, we can set opacity equals one. Okay, and yeah, I think we'll leave this here. If we're not if we don't actually want to put anything on the map, uh, we can just return at this stage. Uh, this is probably not a really useful function for us right now. In fact, let's go ahead and get rid of it. Um, Sometimes I like to do that if you're debugging, you can put that in there and, you know, without having to actually draw anything. Okay, um... Okay. And again, the, this, there's a lot of complications in what I was doing earlier that don't exist here. So the, the z-value, which is just, this is just a shortcut, we just want to use a sort of an alias for map get zoom. This tells us what zoom level we're at. Map bounds, um we get the map's boundaries, and so this is again uh, something that only exists if you're doing both Mercator and Equiangular. With an Equiangular map, you can actually go all the way to nine, plus and minus 90, that's not a problem. With Mercator, you can't, um, and you have to sort of, if you're using one or the other, you have to sort of compensate for that. Since we're only going to be using Mercator, we're going to ignore that, uh, ignore that line. Okay, let's see, and let's see, and again, this is, yeah, this is actually, this is going to look stupid now because um, it's, there's no real complication here, and in fact, if we want, I'm, these are just convenience variables, I mean, it, we're just literally getting the, the southeast, west, you know, um, at least I think that's what we're doing. There might be a slight issue here because, um, which we'll take a look at. In fact, we could probably do it now. Uh, if you are on a, a, on a Google map or let's say OSM map, since that's what we're using, and you go so far east that you sort of loop around from, you know, the very eastern part of the world to the western part of the world, the longitude numbers will actually go from like 180 to 181 instead of going to minus 179. In other words, you can sort of you can sort of get really high and low longitudes 
by going sufficiently far east and west. Um, can't do that with north and south. That creates an issue, which is what I think I'm trying to get away from here. I'm going to ignore it for now. If it comes up, we can use some sort of modding or something to sort of understand what our real map bounds are. Uh, the, the other problem here is going to be the... Um, if we do this to our map, so we're... Am I... Yeah. In fact, you can sort of see this here. So here we have a nice sort of uh, map, the United States, uh, going to west longitude, minus 157, minus 180. So when you go... Oh, that's actually nice. West longitude, 157.5. Okay, good. So I'm, either I did something to this, or it's doing some magic here. Um, but the problem used to be, if you kept going east, the numbers kept increasing beyond 180. But apparently, whatever I did here, I managed to fix that. Uh, and, it, and I don't think it's automatic, but we're going to pretend it is. We're going to pretend that uh, the, uh, the, the boundaries here are correct. The problem here is, when you look at something like this, make sure I got this correct, You'll notice that the west longitude here, near the west end of the map, is 135. Near the east, it's minus 135. And so the eastern longitude is actually less than the western longitude. And that, I think, will cause us some problems, uh, which we will fix later on. Um, okay. Now this is a... Uh, wow. Okay. Okay, so now the question, the thing we need to do now is basically ask, if we know what the bounds of the map are, what latitudes and longitudes are actually being shown? Uh, sorry, which tiles are being shown? So if we go over here, for example, and zoom in a little bit, because we want, want to get sort of a good example here. So if we know, give it a sec here to clear. So if we know we want to paint this part of the map, um, this is tile 25, 47, 7. This one's going to be tile 24, 47, 7, even though you can't see because it's a little bit obscured. So we basically need to know, you know, which these, we need to know the names of these tiles here, these sort of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 15, but we actually need the border tiles too, and the little tiny tiles up here. We need to know every tile that touches this map so we can correctly paint it. The way to do this is... Yeah, let's see. Um, let's see. It's actually, for the longitude, it's really simple. Uh, because, for example, at level 10, at zoom level 10, you have 2 to the 10th, or 1,024 uh, boxes in each direction. 1,024 x values, 1,024 y values. Um, and for longitude, each 1,000, you know, each box takes up 1 over 1,024 of the, all the longitude values. So the 360 degrees is broken up into 1,024 pieces. Very simple linear relationship. For latitudes, that is not true. Uh, for latitudes, uh, because it's a Mercator projection, the, uh, the function that converts from latitude to the, the, the x, the y coordinate of the tile is a little bit more complicated. So let's take a look at that. Uh, and I've written that function, so it's not, it's not hideous. But, um, and there's a... And by the way, I did something here that's probably, well, you know, JavaScript people will kill me for. There's a function called the Gutermannian function, which is actually really useful um, in determining when you're doing a Mercator projection. The Gutermannian is a very useful function. And it's really, for real numbers, it's just the arctangent of the hyperbolic sign. Which and you might not know what the hyperbolic sign is. I happen to know what it is, but this is the this is the Gutermannian function. It, c it comes in really handy. So we'll see why it comes in handy here in just a minute. And unfortunately, I've got so many freaking functions here. It's kind of a pain. Um, sphere. What? Ortho. This is the orthographic map, which we're not going to be using. Some of these functions are actually coming from somewhere else, and they're, that's why they look so ugly. Um, somewhere here, there's the one we actually need. Jesus. I really need to do something about this place. Buffer is actually very interesting. I want to look at that in just a minute, too. Map? Okay, this might be it. 
Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is this is actually very similar to the code we just looked at, and it's not helpful, so we're just going to go skip over it. Actually, it's better, but we're going to again sort of. Okay, so here's where we here's where we sort of. Um, um, no, because this is actually for equally rectangular, which we're giving up on. Jeez. It might be in the actual BCD. This might be one of my older functions that I've actually already migrated over. Let's take a look here. If I could spell. Convert string template. That's not interesting. Apply function hash values. That's not interesting either. Bound number var dump. Stir to hash. Merge hashes. Image tile. To uh, let's see. This might be what I need. Oh. No, this is not what we need. This is what we need. I hope. To latitude and longitude. Okay, so what this does is you tell it what the Z, X, and Y values are, and it will tell you what it will actually tell you is the, so like if we gave it 26, 48, 7 as X, Y, and Z values, it would tell you the latitude and longitude of this top left corner here. Um, and that is because by convention I'm saying this is uh, zoom level 7, 26, 48. Over here is 27, 48. So over here, right in the middle, would be 26.5, 48. Uh, and that's just, a, that's just sort of a convention to say that uh, when we say 26, 48, uh, we mean the very top left corner. That's just a convention I decided on. It d you don't have to live. You don't have to live by it. Some people would prefer to say that the middle of the tile is 2648, but my coordinate system, I'm going to say this is 2648, and so that this will explain why we're doing this. Um, okay. Okay, and the default projection is equiangular because I was really getting into that, uh, but. Uh, you could put in one or Mercator, so you, the one we're interested in now is Mercator, so we will have to put projection equals one in there. Okay, so how do we do this? So now, for the longitude, it's not particularly difficult. We take x over, this looks complicated, but it's just two to the zoom level. So this is like saying, um, you know, we're just, uh, just going to take the x value of zero is going to co correspond to negative 180 degrees when you go through this formula. So zero times 1, 360 is 0, minus 180 is minus 180. If you go all the way to the top of this, which would be where object x, the x value is 2 to the zoom level. So let's go look at this here. So at zoom level 7, the x value should go from 0 to 127, not 128. And if we, if we sort of zoom out, oh, I'm sorry, we can't do that. Um, it's a little bit harder to look at. So let's look at it in a sort of a, a easier level of zoom. So at zoom level 4, the x values will go from 0 and almost to 16, not quite 16, but we'll see. So we go east, 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 and of course the 2 to the 4th power is 16, so the highest value will be 16. So right over here, by my convention, we have x is 15. So right over here, we have x is 16, but then it becomes 0 right away because we cross the, the sort of, uh, you know, negative, the positive 180 slash negative 180 longitude line because the Earth is spherical. But so this is so this is uh, the x values just go from zero to two to the power of the zoom level, so zero to sixteen here, and we know that of course uh, zero goes to minus one eighty, sixteen or the high, you know two to the zoom level should go to. Um, hello, person who has somehow joined me, I think. Um, Okay, if that's you, that's that's fine. Uh, feel free to highlight stuff. That's I didn't know you could actually do that because I don't think I have this in multiplayer level. But that's okay. Um, so the, to calculate the longitude is really easy. We just look at the tile number. Uh, we divide if this is like two. If this is two to the zoom, this is going to be three sixty minus one eighty, which is plus one eighty. And the west longitude. Yeah. Um, let's see. Wow. 
Um, oh, I'm sorry, just because I have that there. Okay. Um, so, actually, this is, I'm sort of confused as to why I'm doing this now. Oh, right. Um, because, right, because I'm allowing the uh, tile value to be fractional, like I said, I, I pretend that the tile value is to be fractional. I, I, this this number here doesn't necessarily correspond to a longitude or latitude boundary. It could be right in the middle of a tile. Uh, so then by taking the floor, and then by t adding one and taking the floor, uh, this gives us the westernmost longitude and the easternmost longitude of the tile. Um, so if I say tile 7.5, this will tell me what's in the middle of tile 7, uh, whereas this will tell me what's right at the very western end of tile 7, and this will tell me what's at the eastern end of tile 7, which is also what's at the western end of tile 8, because they, they merge there. Um, if we're using an equiangular projection, we do the same technique exactly, almost exactly for latitude. This is where it gets ugly. If we're using a Mercator projection, this, oh, I don't even use the Gudermannian. Okay, this could actually be simplified using the Gudermannian function, but apparently I decided not to do that yet. So this is the sort of ugly formula. You could just get this out of somewhere. Um, this is the formula that converts a y value to a latitude in a Mercator projection with zoom level z. And then again, now this, these two next ones are actually not that bad. We just take, um, right, we just look at the northern edge of the tile and the southern edge of the tile, because again, we will allow, um, we allow a, a, um, a y value that is fractional. The z value, I don't think we allow to be fractional. Yeah, and that's because we really can't handle fractional zoom values. We can't handle fract fractional tiles makes sense, because, for example, if this is 14 comma, 6, 14x, y6, over here could be like 14.25 and 6, over here could be like 14.25 and 6.25. Uh, zoom fractional levels, they actually do make sense, but they're, they're really difficult because right now I don't know of any, uh, that's not true, I know of one uh, program that lets you do fractional zooms, but right now both OpenStreetMaps and Google Maps, you can't really sort of do a, you know, you either want this zoom level or this zoom level, there's no zoom level between 3 and 4, for example. So we won't deal with it for right now. Okay? Okay, so this is the uh, really ugly calculation for latitude, the edges of the latitude, and then we return the object. And now, the object that we're returning, this is a little bit ugly. Um, you'll notice that we actually use the same object we're sent in. So they send in zx and y, we send back the object exactly the way it is, with zx and y in it, and we add LNG, which is the longitude of the exact fractional x value, uh, west and east longitude, meaning the uh, the longitudes of the edges of the tile. Uh, we add the lat of the exact y value and the north and south y values. So we return the object and we add in the sort of the boundaries that we were requested to add. And then uh, let's see, tile one. Okay. And now the other the flip function, which we're going to need anyway, is. Um, if you know the longitude, latitude, and oh, this is actually incorrect. This should say longitude, latitude, z to tile, but let, let's live with it for right now. Um, if you tell me, so the other question is now, so the first question is, if I know what the tile value is, what's the longitude and latitude? Well, we need to go in the other way now and say, suppose I want to know where I would find a given longitude and latitude at a given zoom level. So at zoom level, let's, let's see, what's our little level here? We're going to zoom a little bit more. So you might say at zoom level, Five, where would I find longitude n minus 90? And if we go over here, we see that it is um, right there between tile 7 and 8. By my naming, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, no, no, that's right. So it, it would be at x equals 8 is where we would find longitude minus 90. Where we find latitude 40, which happens to be a common latitude in the United States. Well, latitude 40 would be... Um, here, 30, this is 31 at the south, 40.9 at the north. So latitude, you know, would be like 12.1 12 12 maybe is where we would expect to find latitude 40. So this is just the inverse function, uh, and it tells us if we have longitude and latitude and a zoom level, what, what the x and y tile numbers will be. 
Okay, and again, this is just saying that if they don't give us a projection, we assume it's equiangular. Probably a mistake on my part. Um, this is really, again, a very simple function. It's actually just the inverse of the function up here, which you would expect, because that, that function converts tile value to longitude. Here we went from longitude to tile value. Um, why, why do I say that? This line looks superfluous to me. I'll leave it in here, but I don't think we need it. Okay, and again, if the projection is equiangular, um, this I did a little bit of fancy stuff here. I said you can't really ask for a the tile of a t uh, you know the uh, the tile for something that's below minus 90 degrees because there's no such latitude or above plus 90 degrees. But other than that, I use a very simple formula, just like for longitude, to return the uh, tile in which a given latitude would be found. And again, this is if if we're using equilateral rectangular, but we're not, so this is well ugly. So we are again doing a check here with the um, the Mercator lat limit is something I've defined in this uh, in this library as being uh, 85.05 degrees, the, the maximum or minimum latitude you can reach in a Mercator map, the way OSM and Google do it. So if it's below, you know, if, so you can't request uh, latitudes below minus 85 or above plus 85, and that just will tell you that if you're doing that. Uh, if you're not doing that, um, this function, again, is something you could look up. It's, it's hideous. It's not really that hideous, to be honest. Um, one thing is, of course, when you're using trigonometric functions, do remember to convert to radians, and you can do that by dividing by 180 and multiplying by pi. That's, uh, you know, pi over 180 is the, is the conversion. So just make sure when you're doing that you use a uh, tangent of, you know, radians, and then we again return the object, and this time we're given the latitude and longitude, and we now return x, y, and z, or we're actually given z also and return x, y. Um, and and over here, because we're using only arc functions, we don't need to convert to radians. The result will be in radians, which is why we need to multiply it by 180 to m over math pi to convert radians back to degrees. Uh, and here, of course, and here we're converting degrees to radians. So that's the sort of whole. And again, these, this all this code is available. It's not hidden or anything. It's in my Git. So this all this really tells us is how to get between tile numbers and latitudes and longitudes. Tile numbers, because that's how slippy, uh, that's how OSM, OpenStreetMap, and Google think. That's how they give our tile sets. That's how they sort of display stuff. And uh, latitude and longitude, because that's how, you know, ge um, ge not geologists, maybe them too, but geographers look at the world as latitude and longitude. Okay, so this is actually still pretty ugly, but we're going to do... Um, I'm being too too fancy there. So what we need to do is we need to take. So now we know the latitude and longitude of our bonds. So let's take. And we know the z level. This z z looks kind of funny, but the z over here is a property value. The z over here is the actual number. Um, that we got the get zoom of the map. So the map zoom level. Um, and let's see, lat is north. So we're trying to find the northwest, um, the tile of the sort of the northwest. Uh, the northwest corner of the map falls in which tile is what we're asking. Longitude west. And projection one, because the default is equiangular, but for slippy tiles we have to use Mercator. Um, Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and do it this way. The problem we're going to run into here is this number can be fractional, um, and when we're going to go, we're going to end up with a for loop. We really don't want fractional numbers uh, because 
uh, we we actually think in because when we request tiles from the tile server, we have to use integers. You can't request tile 4.5. You have to request tile 4. Um, but we will get to that in just a sec. And the southeast one, we're going to convert the longitude and latitude of the southeasternmost tile, which is the south latitude, the east longitude, projection, again, Mercator. And so that should really do it for us. Corner boundaries, OK. And by the way, um, slippy tiles increase in the east and south direction. In other words, this is 612. If you want to increase in, in x, you go to the east. If you want to increase in y, you go south. So these numbers increase in the south and east direction. So to keep these numbers in order, keep these numbers in order, we request northwest at first. That's the lower of the two numbers of both the x and y numbers, and southeast, which is going to be the higher of the x and y numbers. So we will have a, it going in the positive direction in both cases. Uh, not happy with the way I'm florifying these, which we will uh, which we'll do. Just to, so this is actually combining a lot of other functions that it's it's convenient, but it's not really instructive. Okay. Okay. So now that we um, that we know which tiles we're showing, so this tells us um, this tells us the x and y locations of the northwest tile, whereas. And this tells us the x and y locations of the southeast tile. So we're basically going to go uh, in x direction. We're going to go from the westernmost longitude to the easternmost longitude, and the y direction we're going to go from the northernmost longitude latitude to the southernmost latitude. And it's a for loop. And I think here I'm going to not. I am going to go ahead and just put a floor function on this. Um, let's see. Got to be a little bit careful here. So. Yeah, what's going to happen here is uh, what the return value is an object. It's not a um, it's not a single value. So you're seeing here I'm taking the x property of what's being returned, uh, and here I'm taking the x property. So we're going basically from the westernmost to the easternmost tile, from the northernmost to the southernmost tile. Um, and I will put in some debugging so we won't break this, but this is not going to work because uh, the x and y values can be fractional. And in fact, they, most likely they will be fractional. Okay. So now, let's see, uh, north tile. Uh, what am I trying to do here? Okay. And a lot of this is testing, which we're not going to do right now. We can add it in later. Um, and I don't want to delete this code yet, although most of it's not going to be used. The thing we really want to do here, this is the big thing here, is we want to take an image that we've created and overlay it on the map. Okay, now I see why we're doing this. Um, yeah, this. The weird thing is this might actually work for what we're doing. Um, it probably won't, but let's give it a shot. Because we can sort of handle fractional things here. Um, so this is the sort of the thing we really need is the image. So now how do we create the image? Well, so we know our x, y, and z values. Now we want to create our fake slippy tile, which we're going to call fake slippy, FST. And so we're going to call fake slippy tile, create fake slippy tile. Unfortunately, this is one of the few functions I don't have documented, so I'm going to have to flip between the two for just a second here. Create fake slippy tile object any, and that's not really helpful either. Um, and so what I need to do is give it the z, x, and y values. Well, that's not too hard. And what I will get back from it, this is the clever bit, not a PNG image, but the URL of a PNG image. And that is just brilliant, because that's exactly what we need. So let's go back over here. And if this works, 
Um, there's going to be a weirdness that's, that's going to sort of freak us out here. But anyway, um, so this is just x, x, y, y, z, z, which is not as dumb as it looks because the left-hand side is the property, the field name, and the right-hand side is an actual value. Um, and so that is our fake slippy tile, and then we just need to, if this works, nope, that didn't work. Then all we need to do is take the flake slippy tile. Oh, you know what, actually, just for consistency, let's call this URL, because that's what, this returns a URL. So we get a URL back, and we can't define it twice, and then all we have to do... Now the URL cache is something I added to make things faster uh, for real tile sets. For our tile set, we don't really care, because it's not going to be, it's not going to be an issue. So we're going to say URL. The bounds are, I think, just going to be the map bounds because we're. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. Um, and by the way, if this is, this is really the big thing here. This is, the rest of this is crap. Um, this is the big thing. We basically have to take the image uh, and overlay it on the map. I was hoping to get away without doing bounds, but this is going to create an issue for us. Um, so over here we have a, uh, we're going to get fractional values. And the question is... Oh, can I do this? Mm, maybe. Okay, if this works, I'm going to be very surprised. So, so the um, top left corner is going to be just x and y, and the bottom right corner is just going to be x plus 1 and y plus 1. And opacity is whatever we set it to, default of 1. I think we set it to just in case they didn't set it. Yep. Um, add it to the map, and we should be good to go. And the rest of this, we don't. We just hit return here, so we don't even need the rest of that code. Um, so now, let's see. The, the name of this function is place tiles on map. Um, And wow, the only thing we're going to set it is the map and, and the opacity. So this will almost definitely fail. But why not? So we'll put it after the uh, T. So we have two, two, two maps here. Um, and here, in this case, we don't actually have to assign it to anything because this is going to put the, map, the tiles on the map by itself. The map we want to put it on is map, and I'm just going to let leave the opacity as one, because if this works, I'll be really surprised, and I will want to save this. So let's run. Let's watch it crash. Create fake slippy tile is not defined. Of course it's not. Oh, it might be the order in which I'm including the stuff. So over here I'm calling create fake slippy tile. And so I need to put BC maps sort of last, which I thought I'd already done. Um, yeah, by the time you reach here it should be defined. Uh-huh. Well. All right, let's see if it actually is defined or not. Um, BC maps 3211. All right, I'm going to just copy this to make sure I've got it exactly right. Let's see. 
That looks accurate, plus it wouldn't have actually... Hmm. Alrighty. Okay, if anyone in the peanut gallery, that is the audience that's watching this, which is one person, um, has any ideas of why I can't call this function from this library, now would be a good time to tell me. In fact, okay, I think I know what might be wrong. Okay. See, I've got to be real careful the order I call these in because things don't exist until... So over here, place tiles on map, map. Um, map set view, map set zoom. Okay, this shouldn't really do anything, but I'm going to try putting it after I set the map zoom and view. Yeah, maybe maybe that makes it a little bit happier. I don't think this is going to do anything, but let's find out. Great fl uh, fake flippy tile is not defined. NBC maps. Oh, actually, what am I doing in script.js? Nothing, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. Hmm. Leaflet BC lit. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why am I calling leaflet twice? Not cool. Oh, I think I might have done the copy and paste. That's why. And then I forgot to remove the copy. So that's, that probably was it. Nope, that wasn't it. So call this, call, oh, 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 oh. I forgot to call BC lib staging. Why? Pretty elementary error there. Huh, that actually surprises me, but okay. No idea what the hell that is, but uh, let's go over here. And clearly nothing is happening. So that was pretty useless. Um, this error here is actually not an error that I can handle. This is, I think, it happens occasionally. I think it's a replit error. So I don't think I can handle this, but let's take a look here. Map set view, blah, 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 that TL, map zoom. Place tiles on map. Uh, and then I put the rectangle on the map buttons. Hmm, well. Oh, I'm sorry, am I calling the wrong function? Yes, I promised to rename place tiles on map, and of course I didn't do that, because I'm stupid. We need a different function name for this. Uh, so place, that's the only thing I didn't do, I think, is rename this. Place fake tiles on map so it doesn't interfere with the other function name. Uh, so let's do that. I'm still going to blame uh, Replit for this. And 900th times a charm. Thing is, if this, when this fails, it somehow works sometimes, but apparently not today. All right. Create fake slippy tile. Place fake tiles on map. All right. Well, here's where we get into Mr. Debugging. So the first thing to do, just the very first thing, is I'm going to show abbreviate place, place fake tiles on map called. So we want to know if we wouldn't get this far. We'll run it. Okay, good. So we do get a, it is called. So this is a, that is that is a good sign. Um, let's see, and I th think I know what's wrong. Maybe. Oh, actually. Okay. Okay. This is going to be some funky stuff here if this works. Let's see what URLs are being printed before we put them on the map. Uh, and so then the problem might just be uh, this, these bounds or something. So let's do this. Oh. 
So maybe the problem is, okay, maybe we're not even getting into this loop. All right, let's try that then. And here we can use the templating to get stuff like this going. All right, so let's see if we even get into this loop. And if we don't, I think I know what's wrong. Uh, well, we can look at what the values of the uh, northwest x, southeast x, all that crap is. And that might be the problem. Oh. That is good. x equals 1,672. Y equals 3,243. So it's only called once, which is not great. Um, so the question here is... Okay, so the question here is, what are we actually... Are we getting the correct... Um, I mean, we should be, but are we getting the correct... Uh, north, south, and east values. So let's go ahead and log those. Bounds are. Um, in that order. And who knows, maybe they're not coming out right for some reason. Okay. And then, now remember, these are objects. Northwest and southeast are objects. So we need to um, this might work. And if it does, it'll just print out the whole object telling us what northwest is. And of course, we want something similar for southeast. So I think this is maybe where we actually do need to use integer values or something. But let's find out. Uh, bounds are 35 minus 106. Whoa. That's not cool. I think I probably did something stupid. Um, because what I'm seeing here is the south and north values are the same, and the east and west values are the same. So why is that? Well, I guess whoever, whatever printing out map bounds isn't working right. So this is sort of, you know, we're sort of debugging backwards one step at a time. Um, and we might as well print out Z. I mean, it should be fairly obvious, but whatever. Okay. Z13, which is fine. Map bounds, okay, that, that's fine. It's not going to be, it's going to be, let's do it this way. Um, we can be a little, we'll have to be a little bit more direct here. Map bounds. And we'll just, this works a little bit better. If this doesn't work, we can do a var dump, the equivalent of a var dump. Uh, southwest. Yeah, something is wrong here because these two numbers here are exactly the same to um, like a bazillion digits. And this would be to within like a foot, and that's not what's actually happening here in our map. Um, I mean, this is kind of tight, but I mean, still, we, we, it's, not, it's not that tight. Okay, now the... Hmm, well, let's do the, uh, hang on. Oh, we need to actually run it again. Okay. That is very strange. And this is the map bounds function itself, so it's not like we're doing anything super deep here, and it is the right map, because we're getting, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, here we're saying object.map.zoom, and here we're just saying map zoom. So, 
Let's try this. This this if this actually would break things if it's going the wrong way. No, nope, Z is still 13. Object map get bounds is broken. All right. Let's go back over here. Um. Okay. All right. Well, actually, every time the zoom is changed or we, we, we pan, we are going to need to put the fake tiles on the map. So let's go ahead and put this into the update view, which might make it work a little bit better. Um, the only problem is it won't show up right away, but that's maybe okay. And let's do that. Well, we got rid of our stupid error. And now when I move it, well, that's pretty cool. Um, let me check one quick thing, but then we can show, we can do something interesting here, even if this doesn't work. I might have forgotten to set the opacity correctly. Object opacity should default to one, but just let's be safe here and uh, set the opacity explicitly to one. And again, it won't happen right away because it does require a zoomer. Okay. Okay. But this is sort of interesting. Let's look at what these URLs are. You might think, oh, what magic way can I look at these URLs at? These, uh... Oh, God. Shoot me now. These are some long-ass URLs. If I've done this right, and I probably have not, by the way, uh, we can actually... I think this is all one image. Wow. Well, that's way too long for a single image. We can actually go to a, just a, a blank web page, do this, and there it is. So these are just regular everyday URLs um, that when you visit them, they will show you something like this. And... Um, and that's what we were hoping to put on our map, but for some reason our map doesn't like that. And I think we can... So this is, this is all we're doing. Is we're creating a PNG files, portable network graphic files, that look like this, and then slapping them on top of our map. Um, it's a little bit strange because we're using fractional X and Y values, uh, which we need to fix, by the way, but it shouldn't break anything. I mean, if we can display it there, the only thing I can think of is that I got my bounds all sort of fudged up. So, let's take a look at that real quick. So the images look fine. And... Yeah, let's take a look at X and Y real quick. I think... Yep, and that's the problem here. Um, X and Y are like huge numbers that repre represent... Pff, that represent tile numbers, not latitudes and longitudes. And what this wants is a latitude and longitude uh, number, which we don't have. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to need to fix this up a little bit. And the, the, the big problem here is uh, the X and Y values are way the heck out there. They're not where they need to be. They are, they're tile numbers. They're not latitude and longitude numbers. So let's fix this up a little bit here. Um... We actually don't, in North NW.x could be a fractional number, but we don't want to be in the middle of a tile, so we want to take the floor of this number. And for the southeast x value, we want to go to the whole tile. We don't want to stop in the middle. And because it's the rightmost tile, we want to take the ceiling of this number. And again, same thing here with the y values. We want to take the floor of North 
west y and the ceiling so this will you know take the these uh, numbers are in in uh, fractional it'll pull in the whole tile both the westernmost and northernmost and southernmost and easternmost tiles okay so that that's good there um, we still need to create the slippy tile and now it's going to decide to do this um, so I'll need to create the slippy tile. Wow. Um, yeah, still need to create the, uh, yep. And we can still log the URL. Actually, let's not log it for right now. It's really ugly. So now the question is, where do we overlay this? In other words, we know what our tile numbers are. Our tile is X and Y. Uh, where do we put them? You would think, because we already knew the original boundaries of the latitude and longitude, we could figure it out from there. But it's actually a lot easier just to um, run the reverse function, take the x and y values, and find out what latitude and longitude those are at. So um, the function we need to call here, of course, is the opposite of uh, long lat tile. It is tile. Oh, I think it's going to be tile to. Hang on. Damn. Sometimes I get cut file completion off this. Sometimes I don't. Um, pretty sure that's right. Even though I copied it out of a comment. And the tile here is again just real simple. So we're in a loop, so each time it's going to calculate what the, the this is going to be the top left boundary of the tile. Um, actually, it might not be. It might be more than that. So let's log this. Being sloppy here. And let's see what that does. Okay, and again, because of the way we've done it, we actually have to move a little bit before it'll do anything. Um, about to return. So we're looking for Ilum Lat. Wait, did I still have that in there? Oh, that debug statement comes from somewhere else. But anyway, here we go. Uh, projection zero, which is... Oh, I'm sorry, we actually need to also say, because this is all Mercator stuff, we actually need to say um, when we, in this direction, um, projection one, because we are in we are using the Mercator projection. That's it's a minor issue, though. Okay. And, okay, fantastic. So that gives us the x and y values. Now it doesn't, it gives us the top left, the northwest x and y values, but the southeast ones will be just one higher in each direction. So we're actually okay with that. So let's go ahead and say here, um, oh actually no, that, that's not right. Um, okay, so we can just say here, So the northwest, these are the uh, northwest, let's see, let's be correct here. The latitude and longitude of the northwest corner of the tile that we're looking at. And then, of course, we also need the southeast longitude and latitude of the tile we're looking at, which is going to be um, exactly one tile over in the x and y directions. And then, hmm. We might actually be able to get away with, but I'm not going to try that. So it's going to be northwest long lat x, northwest long lat, that's the longitude, um, that's the latitude, and then the easternmost latitude will be southeast long lat dot, oh actually I'm sorry, um, no we actually, I'm sorry, we could get away with this. My mistake. Okay. I'm going to put on a new line here. So the northwest uh, latitude here is going to be the north lat of the object. So let's just call this long lat. It's getting ugly to call it 
too big of a name. So we're going to start with long lat dot the northern latitude, which is n lat, given to us very nicely there. Uh, long lat dot um, western lat western longitude. Oh, I didn't bother to cat camel case there. And then the second coordinate is going to be the southern latitude and the eastern. And I'm almost sure. I always forget whether it's latitude, longitude. I use longitude, latitude order, uh, but I think they use uh, latitude, longitude order. So just to confuse things a little bit. Okay, and so if this is correct. So that, that does the image overlay, and then we need to actually add the image overlay to the map we're given. So this might actually work. Probably won't, but it might. I'm very excited to see if it does. When we move, no. Let's go out to the um, sort of fuller version of this. Move, nothing. So, but we're getting closer, I think. Place fake tiles on map is not defined. Oh, do I have a syntax error somewhere? Let's see. Missing semicolon before statement in place fake tiles. And that is going to be on line 159. Really? That's pretty freaking low. I don't have a line 159. Um... Missing some reference error, it's not defined. Update view, lib leaflet. Well, let's run it again, just see if the syntax error comes up. Oh, that's helpful. Somewhere in the world there's a missing semicolon before a statement. All right, let's see if we can find it. Um, I think my parentheses are balanced here, my braces. And because a lot of this code is copied, I'm going to risk... I'm just going to risk deleting the rest of this, because we're not, we're not using it anyway, obviously. Let's see if we can just delete it. And I think I might be off by a brace, but this will tell me for sure. And why don't we even do a little bit of nice, use their nice little auto-formatting thing. So this takes me out of my x loop, takes me out of my y loop, and this takes me out of my function. I don't think I need a semicolon there. I'll put one there, though. Um, let's see what happens. Yep, didn't like it. Okay, we're pretty sure that's happening in here. And the only lines I added here was I don't need... I don't need the southeast tile. And also, I think I just redefined... No, this is fine. No, I do need that. Sorry. Undo. Okay. Sorry, in here... X. Okay, I'm going to try this one more time. Missing semicolon. Okay, so let's do the ugly things we always do. Let's go ahead and comment out this little block of code here and see if that fixes it. And if it does, obviously the semicolon is missing there. If it doesn't, we will keep commenting out code until our demands are met. I, I mean until, yeah, our demands are met. Okay, so it's not there. Oh, you know what? I think it might be in the original. It might be in the... Um, It might be an index.html. Um, except I didn't really change that, did I? Did I change BC lib? Don't think so. Okay.
All right, well, let's use the old debugging technique of removing. God damn it. Just temporarily removing this line running. Okay, so obviously it's not going to work, but the error is somewhere in libsbcmaps.js. Okay. Function blah, function semicolon. Um, we can actually start getting rid of some of the debugging lines and tighten up this a little bit. And if it's one of the con if it's one of the log lines that killed us, <laughs> we're done. Okay, for x equals blah, for y equals blah. Well, let's see what that does. Yeah. Missing semicolon before statement. Okay, well, we're narrowing it down. Um, is that properly closed off there? No. Okay, there it is. Child that lucky. Okay, that was the problem run. Yay. Result. Whoa. Just touched it and it's good to go. So now let's look at the, let's go ahead and close off some of these. Let's look at this from over here. And the moment I move it, there we go. Beautiful. Uh, far too opaque. And good, it's, it is updating when I move the map. Um, not very useful right now because of course the opacity is one, which means it's totally going to go over the uh, the map itself, so we just get to see these values. Let's fix that real quick. I'm going to go ahead and download this as a zip because I think this is working well enough to make me happy. Um, so now let's kill it. We're going to actually uh, make the opacity variable. Uh, probably not today though. Uh, let's make this opacity point... Eh, let's make it point 0.3. Let's see what that does. And let's go over here, reload. That's like way opaque. So something's wrong here. Opacity of 0.3 is the, do I remember it? I think I did put this in here though, right? I said, um, yeah, it would be good if I actually set the opacity, huh? Uh, image overlay, URL, bounds, and I think this is what I want to do, opacity equals object opacity. Unless that gives me a, yep, that didn't like that. Close off, close off. Oh. I think if you do that, you have to put this in a little object. Any optional parameters go in an object. That is apparently correct. And there we have it. It's sort of a, you know, we could change this, of course, and we actually want to make it controllable at some point. Uh, but, um, but there we've placed a sort of a fake slippy tile that just tells us a little bit of information about the slippy tiles. Um, so have you ever been curious where I-40 and I-25 intersect? Uh, I don't think you have. I probably haven't been either, actually, now that I think about it. Northern Word City of Albuquerque. Oh, there it is. Okay, this is... Oh, it's taking a second to... Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, one problem I didn't see is... Um, I never erase anything that I put in. So we now have just sort of, uh, everything's getting overlapped. Which is kind of cool if you think about it. But also not really useful. So if I do this, I'm actually getting print, printing over multiple times. Um, there is a way to fix that. We can actually, when we call this routine, um, 
have it delete what it had before. Uh, there is a way to do that, and I don't remember what it is. Um, in fact, we could have update view actually remove every single tile and and redraw it. Um, I don't think that's a great idea. It's not hard to do because you can look at all the uh, the overlay children and and do that. Um, we could just keep track of the the overlays because when we do an overlay, it actually creates a uh, it actually creates a an object which we can then later remove from the map or delete entirely. Um, but let's see, and we might even be able to just give it like a, a tag or an array or something. Um, but I think that's going to be it for today. Uh, hope you had a good time. No, I don't. Uh, hello, Lurks. Um, hope you had a bad time. Hope you had a good time. I don't care. Uh, if you find this useful, eh, great. Who cares? Okay, I'm going to end the stream for now. And uh, next time, uh, we're going to fix that error. Let's actually make a note here. Um, file called to do. Fix error with overlapping fake slippy tiles. Delete old ones. Okay. And we don't only need to save it. Uh, I think I downloaded a recent copy. I'll do it again just to be safe. And goodbye for now, folks.